Welcome back to ECE 441A, 541A. I'm calling this short session Design with the Ruth Array, or you could think of this as using the Ruth Array with an adjustable parameter. And the adjustable parameter then is allowing us the opportunity to do some design, which is what everybody likes to start doing at this point in the course. Here is an example. We have a plant or a system. It's parameterized via the natural frequency omega sub n and zeta, the damping ratio. But you could think of this as a type 1 system. We have the one integrator, and then we have a real pole at minus 2 zeta omega sub n in the open loop system. And what we want to do is control this system, this type 1 system, with a controller, and this controller actually has two different parts in basically in parallel, and you can see those two paths taking the air signal, the same air signal, and one is simply passing that air signal on to the summing junction. The other path is taking the air signal and in the time domain is actually integrating that signal and scaling it by k, and the sum of those two outputs then form the input to the system, which is now our input, let's say, to the plant, u of s. And our controller if we call that a transfer function d of s, is 1 plus k over s. It's this parallel combination. If we put those over a common denominator, we have s, and then we have s plus k for our transfer function of the controller. This actually could be referred to as a, if you think of this, as a proportional term, and in this case it's exactly proportional to the air, we're not scaling that. We also have an integral term, and the combination of those two then, you might hear someone speak of a PI controller. In this particular case, we are not adjusting the gain on our proportional term. We're only allowing one parameter to be adjusted, and that's the gain on our integral term. If we resketch then the block diagram of our system with the slightly modified structure of our controller, which is now this zero at minus k and a pole at the origin. We have this s plus k over s transfer function. We could then resketch our block diagram. To now have our controller is this s plus k over s, and our plant is still this constant omega sub n squared s over s plus 2 zeta omega sub n. Again, we want to feed that output of the controlled system back, compare that with the reference input, and we now have a closed loop system with, let's say, our plant, g of s, and our controller, which is this PI controller restructured as a transfer function, s plus k over s. If we now sort of treat all of this together, maybe I don't want to call that G. Let me call the plant G bar, and let's call this controller what we've called it before, D of S. If I now combine those two in cascade, then I will be able to use my common terminology for the 
transfer function in the forward path, I could now call this a g of x. So that the combination, the cascade combination of our PI controller and second order plant is now this g of s. That's now this d of s g bar of s. With that, I can now find the closed loop transfer function in terms of g, and that's just g of s over 1 plus g of s h of s, but h of s, our feedback path, is in fact unity, and we then have just g over 1 plus g. If we put in the parameterized form of our plant and controller for g, we then have omega sub n squared s plus k all over s times s. So we have s squared s plus 2 zeta omega sub n. There's g, and now we have 1 plus that same g in the denominator. If we obtain a common denominator in both the numerator and denominator, which is simply that s squared times the quantity s plus 2 zeta omega sub n, and cancel that in the numerator and denominator's denominator, we end up with a numerator of omega sub n squared s plus k. And in the denominator, we now have s squared times that first linear factor, s plus 2 zeta omega sub n, plus omega sub n squared s plus k. If we multiply out the s squared or push the s squared through, we then have s cubed plus 2 zeta omega sub n s squared plus omega sub n squared s plus omega sub n squared times k. That's now our closed loop transfer function in terms of these plant parameters, the damping ratio of zeta and natural frequency of omega sub n, and our adjustable gain on the integral piece of our controller, which is k. If we think of some, let's say, typical values, let's say that zeta now is going to be about 0.2, if you sort of multiply everything out, it ends up being 0.199. Maybe if we want to get a little bit more accurate and our natural frequency, let's just say that is 86.8 or 86.6, which gives us then an omega sub n squared of 7,500. And with those typical values substituted in, our denominator expression now only depends on the adjustable gain k in our integral component of our controller. And we have a denominator polynomial equaling s cubed plus 34.5 s squared plus 7500 s plus 7500 k. That's now our closed loop denominator and we want to find out are there values of k that actually allow that denominator to have all of its roots in the left half plane or to produce a stable closed loop system. Is there a range of k that will produce that? We can check that out by building up the Ruth array. Doing our bookkeeping, we now have the four rows in our Ruth array. The first row is going to be 1 and 7,500. The second row is going to be 34.5 and 7,500 times k. The S1 row will just have the leftmost column entry, and that's going to be 34.5 times 7,500 minus 7,500 K times 1 all over 
and knowing what we do about how to calculate the S0 row, we can actually see that that 7500K is going to come down in the roof array from the second row since we're now taking that blue mess of numbers and constant times 7500K minus 34 and a half times zero, that goes away, divided by that mess of blue numbers and we're simply left with 7500K. If we want a stable system from this third order polynomial, then that means that we do not want any roots in the right half plane. We want zero roots in the right half plane, which means we want zero sign changes to occur as we examine the sign of the elements in the left column. Meaning, for stability of that third order polynomial, we can first look at the S0 row and we want that to actually be positive. We actually want all of these to have a positive sign. Since the first two were positive, we need the S1 row to be positive and we need the S0 row to be positive. It's just easier because now to look at the S0 row first and that now says that we need 7500K to be bigger than zero and 7500 is a positive number, we can divide that out and we see that we need at least k to be positive in order to keep the signs in the leftmost column positive relative to the S0 row. The S1 row to be positive, the denominator in that expression is positive. We don't need to worry about that. We really just need to worry about the sign of the numerator. And that then says that we need 34.5 times 7500 minus 7500K. We need all of that to be bigger than zero. Luckily for us, we have a common factor and we can get rid of some of those large numbers, which leads us now to this relationship that we need 34 and a half minus K to exceed zero, or if we push K or we add K to both sides, we now see that K is upper bounded by 34 and a half and it's lower bounded by zero or for stability of this third order system with a PI controller with the adjustable gain on the integral piece, we see that K now can live between zero and 34 and a half to produce a stable system. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about what might be happening with this system, you might say, well, what happens right on the border or the upper limit on K, at the lower limit on K, we simply have no integral term in our controller and our closed loop denominator now actually has a hole right at the origin and that may not be what we want. So that's why when K is equal to zero, you can see that we now have a pole at the origin and then we have a quadratic which will be S squared plus 34.5S plus 7500. If we now look at what happens when K is at the upper limit of stability, let's see what we can learn in that case. If we are in that case, then Looking at the roof array, if K is now 34 and a half, that forces S1, the numerator in that expression, to actually equal zero. And if the S1 row is zero, we then know that the row immediately above the all zero row impacts the 
symmetry of the roots that exist in that particular closed loop denominator polynomial for a gain of k equal to 34 and a half. With our gain of 34 and a half, we now have two roots that are symmetric. with respect to the origin. And we can actually figure out what those roots are for this value of gain k. Again, we're looking at the upper limit on the gain k, which we probably don't want because that's right on the stability boundary and we should then be able to figure out what our remaining poles are or what the symmetric poles are. If we go to the S squared row in the root array, we see that we have 34 and a half for one coefficient and that's scaling the leading term in that row which is the S squared term plus then we have 74 or 7500 times 34 and a half. that row being set equal to zero will then allow us to determine. This is what happens when we replace k with 34 and a half. Now the roots when that gain is at 34 and a half we can find by solving the roots of this particular polynomial canceling the 34 and a half from both terms in that expression says that we now have s squared plus 7500 equaling 0 or s squared equaling 7 minus 7500 or now we can see that each of these closed loop poles are at plus and minus j, the square root of 7,500, or plus and minus j, 86.6. We now have symmetry. If we crank up the gain k, we do now produce symmetry with respect to the origin, and we're right now on the boundary of stability, which is right on the imaginary axis. If we are still looking at that particular case and we know that we have three roots, this is a third order system, we found two of those, what's the value of the third root? Our cubic equation is s cubed plus 34.5s squared plus 7500s plus 7500 times 34.5. But we now know two of those roots, or we know the quadratic factor. It was s squared plus 7500 for a value of 34.5. We found that that was actually one of the factors. What we don't know is what the other linear factor, since we have three roots and we've already accounted for two of those with the quadratic, we now know that the third factor must have the form s plus a. What we want to do is find a. If we can find a, then we know where our third root is located. If we multiplied all of that out, we would have an s cubed plus an AS squared plus a 7500S plus a 7500A. We don't really need all of those. Really what we need is to equate enough coefficients to find our unknown parameters. In this case, we only have the one unknown parameter, which is A, and we could find that by simply comparing coefficients that are easy to compare. We could either compare the last coefficient or we could compare the leading coefficient 
if we compare the leading, or I'm sorry, the coefficient of the S squared term, then we can see that the third root is such that we now have S plus A, and A is now 34 and a half by equating coefficients of the two polynomials. The one that we found by evaluating for k equal to 34 and a half, and the other one when we put in this unknown third pole at a location of minus a. If we now solve this factor, we see that the third pole is actually at minus 34 and a half, which now says with our integrator gain as high as 34 and a half, we are now again at the verge of stability. We have two poles right on the imaginary axis at plus and minus 90, let's say, and our third pole is about a third of that, which is now at minus 34.5. And that's the S-plane picture of the poles, closed-loop poles, at the upper limit of the integrator gain. And we obviously won't want to be there. What we want to be is have all three poles in the left half plane, and this is sort of a limiting pole configuration that would occur if we cranked up the integrator gain right to the verge of stability. And this is what you can do then with a system that maybe has an adjustable parameter. You could investigate the stability of that system by checking the root array with that adjustable parameter and guaranteeing that all of the entries in the leftmost column are positive, which then would produce a stable closed-loop system.